The Dorian mode, or the Dorian scale, is basically just a special type of minor scale. Dorian is exactly the same as the natural minor scale, otherwise known as Aeolian, but Dorian's sixth degree is raised. So whereas E natural minor would have a C natural as its sixth note, E Dorian has a C sharp. And as you can hear, this small change gives Dorian a noticeably different character to the natural minor scale. Dorian sounds brighter, more mystical and uplifting. A textbook example of Dorian is the intro to Riders on the Storm by The Doors. The iconic descending keyboard line is literally just working its way down the E Dorian scale. If Riders on the Storm didn't use Dorian and it instead used the natural minor scale, it would sound like this. To me, that sounded far more serious and mournful, whereas Dorian sounded whimsical and intriguing. To put it crudely, Dorian is like a less sad minor scale. A song that is entirely written in Dorian is Mad World by Tears for Fears, later covered by Gary Jules. What I love about Mad World is that in the verses, the Dorian sound is only present in the chords and not the melody. We have the Dorian raised sixth note, the D natural, in this B flat chord here giving the verse a Dorian sound, but that D natural, the raised sixth, isn't appearing in the vocal melody. But in the chorus, the vocal finally lands quite prominently on that distinctive raised sixth on the D natural, bringing full attention to the curious Dorian sound. And I find it kind of funny, find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. If Mad World wasn't in Dorian and instead had the flattened sixth of the natural minor scale here, it would sound like this. And I find it kind of funny, find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. That sounds far more depressed and woeful. The Dorian Ray sixth that we actually get in Mad World gives the chorus a moment of brightness and hope in an otherwise cheerless song. Now, as you probably already know, Dorian isn't just a scale, it's also a mode. It's the second mode of the major scale. But what is a mode? This is the scale of A major. However, if I now treat the second note of the scale, the B, as the root note, I get a different scale, B Dorian. B Dorian is the second mode of A major. It uses all the exact same notes as A major, but instead of treating A as the root note, it treats B as the root, as the centre of gravity. A major is the parent scale to B Dorian. They are related, but far from the same thing. Now, I think a common point of confusion with modes is that even though they're derived from a major scale, they're related to a major scale, you won't really be using them alongside that major scale. For example, B Dorian is derived from A major, but you'd rarely be using B Dorian with A major. You're more likely to use B Dorian with B major or B minor. B Dorian is a B scale, not an A scale, even though its notes are derived from A major. When Dorian is used in a melody, it lends an ethereal, intriguing quality to a song. For example, in the traditional folk tune Scarborough Fair, when we reach the lyric Rosemary and Time, we can hear the Dorian Ray sixth, lending the tune a whimsical, bright sound. Parsley, sage, rosemary and time. The sixth note of the Dorian scale really is the most significant of its seven notes as it's the one note that differentiates it from the more typical natural minor scale. So when that sixth note is first introduced in a piece of music, it can be a particularly ear-catching moment, as it's the moment that the song goes from being in plain old minor to being in Dorian. For example, Joni Mitchell's Woodstock is in E flat minor, 
But until the end of the first chorus, the whole song is actually pentatonic. In other words, until the end of the chorus, the song doesn't touch the sixth degree of the scale in its chords or melody, meaning that we're not really in Dorian or natural minor. We're just in an ambiguous pentatonic minor. Came upon a child of God. He was walking... It's not until the end of the chorus that Joni's vocal finally lands on the Dorian sixth, this C natural, introducing the Dorian flavour to the song for the first time. Likewise, in Blue Jeans by Lana Del Rey, although the chord progression is using the Dorian sixth from more or less the very beginning of the song, the Dorian sixth doesn't make an appearance in the vocal melody until the chorus. I will love you till the end of time. I would wait a million years. Saving the Dorian sixth for the chorus adds a sense of satisfaction and intrigue when we finally hear it which helps to lift the chorus and set it apart from the verse. Some songs in Dorian, though, never actually hit the sixth note in their melodies, and instead keep the Dorian-ness exclusive to the chords. Drive by R.E.M. is in D Dorian, but the vocal melody never actually hits the sixth degree. So if we were looking at the vocal melody in isolation, we wouldn't refer to it as Dorian. However, the chord progression of Drive is Dorian, thanks to this G major chord that contains the raised sixth. So the Dorian chord progression effectively recontextualizes Drive's otherwise ambiguously minor melody, meaning we can now refer to the entire song as being in D Dorian. Tie another one to the racks, baby. Style of music where you'll often find Dorian is funk music. In fact, I would say that the Dorian mode is probably more common in funk than the natural minor scale is. Funk songs will actually often feature the exact same Dorian chord progression, a move from the minor 1 chord to the major 4 chord. This chord progression, which I call the Dorian Vamp, captures the essence of Dorian in just two chords. The minor 1 chord acts to set us in a minor key, and then the major 4 chord introduces Dorian's signature raised 6th note. This Dorian vamp isn't only common in funk music, it can be found across many styles of music and is a very common way to bring the Dorian sound into a song. Of course, this chord progression isn't the only way to give a song that Dorian sound. For example, instead of using the major version of the IV chord alongside the minor tonic chord, we could instead use a minor chord built on the second degree of the scale. This chord also features Dorian's distinctive raised sixth. It's the raised sixth that makes it a minor chord, rather than the diminished chord that we would get if we were in natural minor. Wait a sec, when you look at Romance, 
A great way to bring out the character of Dorian is to directly contrast it with the natural minor, otherwise known as the Aeolian mode. During the verse of the Beatles' Eleanor Rigby, Paul initially sings the Dorian raised sixth, the C sharp, but just one line later, he now sings the C natural, shifting the tonality from E Dorian to E Aeolian. Except the rise in the church where a wedding is been, lives in a dream. This use of both the bright Dorian and the darker Aeolian sound in the same line contributes to Eleanor Rigby's unsettled, eerie mood. Likewise, Michael Jackson's thriller, written by Rod Templeton, is largely in C-sharp Dorian, as we can see from the A-sharp in the melody here, and in this F-sharp major chord. But occasionally, the F-sharp major chord will shift to an F-sharp minor, giving us a little hint of the Aeolian mode. Briefly switching away from Dorian to Aeolian and then back again brings out the brightness of Dorian and the bleakness of Aeolian. A band that are seemingly very fond of Dorian is Pink Floyd. The minor one to major four Dorian vamp that we were discussing earlier makes an appearance in many Floyd songs, often being vamped for minutes on end. The last example of Dorian that we'll look at today is So What by Miles Davis. So What is probably the most famous example of a style of jazz called modal jazz. In modal jazz, rather than the compositions being based on chord progressions, the music instead basically just hangs around on tonal centres whilst the soloists explore different modes on top. On So What, rather than having a conventional chord progression, we have 16 bars of D Dorian, then 8 bars of E flat Dorian, and then a further 8 bars of D Dorian. So although you could try and boil this down to being D minor 7 followed by E flat minor 7 and then returning to D minor 7, these shifts aren't chord changes, they're changes in mode, they're almost closer to key changes. During these sections we'll explore the scale of D Dorian. And during this section, we'll explore E flat Dorian. I'll leave you today with this piece that I wrote in A Dorian. If you can think of any other songs in Dorian, then do let me know in the comments below. In fact, if you can think of any modal song, then do leave it down below, because I'm planning on doing a video like this on each mode of the major scale. And thank you as always to all of the wonderful people who support me on Patreon, including the names you see on screen right now, and Abigail Allen, Andre Saez Diaja, Andrew, Andrew Brown, Andrew Sussman, Austin Barrett, Austin Russell, Bob McKinstry, Brittany Parker, Cameron Olivella, Colin Aiken, Chris Cabell, Christopher Ryan, David Rivers, Donald Howard, Dr. Darren Wicks, Elena Skorchenko, Esben Hansen, Eugene Leroy, F.D. Hodor, Gilmo Latona, Hamish Brocklebank, Hugo Miller, James K.O., J.A. Kokensparger, John John Dye, Jonas Soderstrom, Justin Vigor, Lavender Mint Rose, Mark Height, Mark Ziegenhagen, Max O'Keefe, Melody Composer Squared, Melody Schonert, Michael Vivian, Nancy Gillard, Nathan Lawrence, Nathaniel Park, Paul Muller, Paul Pazel, Peter Dumphy, Piotr Schmielowski, Roger Clay, Sam Lynn, Scott Fenley, Sean Kennedy, Steve Daly, Stephen Lazaro, Tim Beaker, Trisha Adams, Tim Payne, Toot, Victor Levy, Vidad Flowers, Vladimir Kodakov, and Volti.